So I finally got ready to play Wellington's victory, the whole battle of Waterloo. Um, you can see it's a, there's a four mapper, it's a big space. And uh, you can see I've got an awkward setup here. So um, this shelf here contains the, overhangs the back of it, and so you get this large shadow. Now it's not so bad for me because I, I do have spots. So I can I can lighten up areas, but you can see that's going to be a real pain for lighting for purposes of video. But we'll see how it goes. I, I'm not planning to film the whole thing. <laughs> that would be an epic of twenty hours, you know. Um. So well, this is the map as it looks set up. It is actually in real life. It's the colours are warmer than are coming out here. And I know if I adjusted the lighting again, then they would be too hot. So. I'm just imagine a kind of like a warmer yellow and brown. Um, so I'll just quickly show you the counters. Here's all the counters of the French and the Allied set up, ready for setup. So um, the setup hex is indicated underneath these counters. The um, Prussians are all here. Um, they do not set up on the board, obviously. The, uh, the town or village of Lazny is here. So they will essentially come in on these two roads at a certain point um, and make their way towards the battlefield. Um, so these are all the French. You can see um, cavalry, uh, horse artillery, infantry formations, so we've got what three or four corps here and then various infantry and uh, artillery in reserve. Uh, these are markers for army demoralization and morale records, records of committed French units. So we record the French morale here and the committed French units here. Um, uh, fortunately the um, Allied armies is recorded here, not, not right at the back there. Um, what we do have down this side is a turn key, so it reminds us on every hour to um, adjust morale. And we have the quarter hourly turns, um, which will end, all scenarios end at 9.30 in the evening. Um, Wellington is buried in here somewhere. Where's he gone? I've lost him. There he is. He's an 8-6 leader. That means 6 movement and 8 command span. Napoleon's at the top there. He's also 8-6. So there's no difference between those two in terms of command span. Um, or in terms of ability in, within the rules of the game. Now, uh, I'll just take you quick battleground tour we've got um necessary charts and tables here abbreviated sequence of play terrain key and um the terrains are uh, movement costs only of one or two types so you don't need much on there okay so um Pansinoi is here so historically as we know that the prussians came on there made their way down here and uh, there was much fighting occurring here. Um, we have La Maison du Roy, namely Calou here. Um, now I'm opting to play the scenario, it's called the early start or something like that. So normally um, the, the normal scenario you would have the um, Anglo-Allied, sorry, where is it? Yes, Anglo-Allied setting up on the ridge here uh, with Laissant here and Ougmont there. And then um, the French corps would be set up more or less along this line, ready for the morning assault. Um, I'm with the um, early start scenario, so it's I think the premise is that uh, 
there wasn't so much rain the night before, so Napoleon did not wait for that, uh, um, for the sodden land uh, ground to ebb away before engaging his artillery. Basically, it's not a completely free setup, but um, you start off with, um, yes, I think you start off with one corps, I think, in the vicinity of here, one corps and some artillery and cavalry, and then um, Napoleon and Ney set up here, and the rest of the French army is off board. Um, the Allies still have to set up. They were there waiting more or less from the night before, were they not? So um, that will be the setup. You've got La Belle Alliance here. Okay. Um, this is all raised ground. And um, these um, sheets are under my plexi, but the setup sheets actually obscuring so there's some playable hexes along here so basically in that area so essentially what it means is it's i'm just going to try a plan where the french they will send a core or two kind of pinning over there and the rest of the army is going to move around here um i did consider the op sort of opposite direction which in which they would move up here to the villages of Papillot, Le Hay, Smohain and Frischemont, and in that way they could sit between any um, Prussians that are coming and the Anglo-Allied army, and so divide the forces. But I decided to try this um, version instead, in that um, it puts us further away as the French from any um, Prussian reinforcements. So I'm basically working on the pr premise that maybe there was a bit of better communication between Napoleon and... Uh, oh, was it Grouchy? If I've forgotten the chap who, who was supposed to be holding off the Prussians. And anyway, so Napoleon has at least an inkling that the Prussians are on their way. Um, he wants to get through to... There's Mont Saint-Jean and the road leading off there towards Brussels. Um, and rather than putting himself in between going up this way, he's decided to go this way. It seems like... Um, I don't know. I mean, it could go either way. You know, without knowing the Prussians were coming, it might be better to go that way than this way because you do not have Ougmont to deal with. You would just... But then you would have these villages to, to deal with. So um, it, I think it's easier to skirt around Ugermont than to skirt all the way around these up towards it's further to get to the Brussels road. So the idea is essentially to move this way, causing um, Wellington to, and his force to be dislodged from their prepared positions. Um, so uh, where do we have? We have, I'll just show you, up to, you've got, a village Owain up there, you can't really see it at this angle. You can see there's a river running along here. It peters out here, and we have the clear area in between. We've got these um, obstructed areas around here. These are all obstructed hex sides. Obstructed hex sides working along the top of here, hedgerows and crest lines and so forth. And then similarly broken hexides here. So um, we're not going to... Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't fully worked out the plan. But I just decided I wasn't going to do just the set piece battle. Because um, I'm not confident enough of my ability. Um, tactical ability in this system. I'm still not happy in... Uh, the, I'm feeling a bit better having read the designs notes again. On how to use the artillery, the cavalry and the... Um, infantry uh it was a bit of news to me that ideally you want your cavalry to soften up and then the infantry to finish off um units and the units have been pinned by artillery before that i was tending to think that the infantry um would soften up and sort of cause morale losses to the units and then the cavalry would come in and finish them off. You do want a cavalry arm to sort of uh, pursue a demoralising army 
but within the battle I, they're going to try that tactic more in that uh, um, if if the English are set up here they're going to be bringing artillery around here and here so the French will have to take um, Ougamont that's going to be interesting fight um, so artillery to start bombarding them and then cavalry to come around and then once the cavalry have done a few charges and the lines are breaking up and so forth to send the infantry in to finish them off that is the general idea so the French want um, artillery and a sizable pinning force here um, they want to um, ideally they want to get some artillery in here but otherwise they'll be moving them around here Hmm. When I look at it, though, is that such a good idea? Because well, we do have s because there's all this um, this terrain is will be easy to defend against artillery. So essentially, the artillery would have to get all the way around here, or move up to this terrain to engage forces here. Now the Allied forces will be along here. So really, we want to get onto this road. So we want to go up here which means taking this or going right past it and then assailing the forces from the back there. So um, I'm not playing Waterloo as Waterloo as such. I'm playing a bit of a battle of manoeuvre to start with. But, um, you know, that's, that's my prerogative. Um, I'm interested in the system uh, and how the system works rather than playing out the battle of Waterloo because I've done that quite a few times and I don't just want to, you know, do the predicted morning assault and then second assault and so forth and just see how the system plays it out. I want to play out a game using the system. Um, yeah, just looking again, like this is, there's, there's woods here. So even if we, even if the French came around here, there's not such clear lines of sight. So I think I'm going to stick with my plan. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I think it's the biggest benefit is going to be that the Prussians will be a lot further away. Um, you know, I could do it as an alternate history to take them up through here, or perhaps, you know, just concentrate on one side, maybe this, forget about these two, and just push straight through here, um, which is, is more or less what I tried to do in the scenario of that part of the battle. But... Um, I'm going to try this this version. So I'm going to set up the Anglo Allied. We'll see how that looks, and uh, and the initial starting French forces. Now I I didn't mention the dispositions of um, the Anglo Allied. So we have Hanoverian units here, Dutch units here, and Brunswickers, King's German Legion, and then British. Um, here. So I've set up the Hanoverians. They're actually the same colour but I've modified my counters with a little greenish dot just so I can distinguish them just for interest sake really because you can see they are not held together. They are um, scattered throughout the force. And what we have here, these are from the Reserve Corps, um, uh, the 5th Division. So we got the 5th and 4th Brigades um, with some artillery over here. Now they would be commanded by Vinky and Best but they're not activated yet. Then um, so the commander's not on, on board. So uh, we have uh, these ones are in the 1st Corps 3rd Division 1st Brigade. Um, there's some reserve artillery here there's a lone cavalry unit, so they will be um, part of a bunch of Anglo-Allied cavalry. And then back here we have um, some fellows who are actually in, in the second corps. So um, their leaders are still on here. Now one or two of them may actually be committed at the start, but otherwise not. And then finally we have this Jaeger um, brigade has been um, put in a skirmish companies in uh, the Hugomont Gardens. Gardens? Gardens. So now here you can see the line beginning to take shape with the Dutch units having joined in. There's a whole detachment of them in Hugomont. 
Now, something I didn't know, which is very interesting, because they'd never appeared in the scenarios, is um, all these Dutch units here. And if you look, the Dutch are not bad. They're strength of six, morale of four, which is decent morale. We've got some horse artillery and artillery there, so we've got a sort of front line and some reserves there. Um, there's a... Uh, the Hanoverians at Merby Brain. Just to note, the Hanoverians, you see the middle number two, that's the morale, not so great. Still six, that, that's large units. Um, then um, there's a, a bit of a backstop there, very large units. Eight, morale of four, that's good. Um, these Hanoverians are excellent quality, morales of four and even five. Then we've got a uh, cavalry back here with a couple of um, horse artillery. We have a, an artillery piece here, um, sighted to fire over those units in front. We've got an artillery here, and then they're kind of like the front, um, sk uh, well, powerful units, eight, eight, eight. They're down to seven because they've released these skirmishers, and they've got skirmishers in front. So they're obviously holding um, this area in case the French try to move through there. Now, um... That is really interesting for me, because as I said, I was thinking that bring the French around here. I didn't know there are any Anglo-Allied forces there. So as Napoleon's briefed and his intelligence becomes clearer, he's going to have second thoughts. You can see there's problems trying to flank the position either way, which I may still go for the original plan. Um, I mean, I may sort it out. I'm going to start from here, so it may not be the exact dispositions. I'm not going to get bogged down in Hougoumont if I can. Um, nor in um, La Science, so I'm, I may go straight through there. Going straight through here is risky, being flanked there. I may still come around here, we shall see. Yikes, what's this? These are the Brunswickers, they didn't appear in any of the scenarios. And where are they? They're right there, on that right flank, which I was thinking to come around. So, it, interesting, it is interesting seeing having the whole thing set up and uh, then sitting myself back here as Napoleon and contemplating what shall I do? So those Brunswickers, they're all there. Um, that was these forces, they've essentially got uh, two cavalry, horse artillery, one artillery and then these units and look at their morale, fives and fours. The uh, cavalry are not so Strong fours, all right for cavalry, but um, that's an impressive bunch of units sitting back there. So, uh, King's German Legion next. So, the King's German Legion in the main sets up here in the middle of the line behind Hugomont. We have a nice detachment here with some horse artillery, we have some um, uh, cavalry here. Some horse artillery here, artillery, infantry, some more cavalry here, and some cavalry over there. So there's, a, there's I remember there's going to be some light cavalry here. There's more bolstering up here. So we've got the uh, British units left to um, display. But looking at this, it does make me think, when I see all the forces massed here, behind the rise here, they would not have been visible, or not well visible. Uh, to Napoleon and co back here and so when Napoleon attacked more or less in the centre the forces there perhaps that was a sensible thing because he could see those forces and knowing of his reports from his leaders in Spain and whatnot how Wellington was prone to hide units behind the rise maybe he figured well I don't see too much here so he's probably got a ton back there I see a fair bit stacked up here so at least I know what's there. I don't know what I'm coming into here. So and maybe he surmised, well, seeing as they're stacked up at the front, there's not so much behind. Um, or just simply is kind of like, well, I know we know what we're getting into there. My units need someone to fight. If they go over this rise, I might know that there's going to be a surprise. But, you know, psychologically, um, my uh, infantry men will be thinking, well, hey, we're up. And then suddenly, bang, so it would be a psychological surprise. Maybe he considered they know where they're up against. They're going to be steeled, what they hit there. And then they're already in the fight. Whatever happens after, that, they'll be ready for that too. Who knows? But it's worth 
you know, that's something that war games can help us contemplate. Not often, as say an author writing a book on a battle, would you be able to lay it out and actually see it as the commanders had it. I mean, what you normally get is just a map with the dispositions already laying down. You don't have a map this side, size. You don't have pieces like this which you move around, in which you you yourself place. So you become part of the um situation of the army. You're not just looking at it and trying to figure out, th analyze things from from looking at it. You're actually involved in it. It's very interesting. <laughs>